everything that the Creator told us not to do, when we do it, it winds up with disease. You name it. If the Creator told us not to drink alcohol, what is one of the greatest diseases in the world today? If the Creator told us not to use drugs, what is one of the greatest diseases in the world today? If the Creator told us not to fornicate, not to commit adultery, what is the greatest disease in the world today? Sexually transmitted diseases. If the Creator told us to be fair, don't take interest, what is the greatest source of stress in the world today? Debt. Everything the Creator said don't do, if you do it, because you have the will to do it, it ends up with disease. Everything the Creator said to do, if you do it, it winds up as a gift. Uh, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said, Ibn Mas'ud, the famous companion, he said it is not possible for a person to love the Qur'an and to love music at the same time. It's not possible. Look at this beautiful statement. In fact, the actual Arabic says, one heart cannot love music and the Qur'an at the same time. This is what he said. You either have a love of the Qur'an or a love of music. And wallahi, this is so true. This is so true. You find a person who loves the Qur'an, when he hears music, he will feel weird, awkward. He doesn't want to listen to it. He, his heart will become, uh, if you like, and as the Quran says, يشمأز, and it will turn, tremble at the, uh, out of fear and out of hatred. Because he loves the Quran and he doesn't like to hear the Quran of Shaitan. The scholars call music the Quran and the Adhan of Shaitan. This is what they call music. I have you know, strong uh, objections to music per se, though there's some scholarly discussion about it. But I will show you what I'm convinced of. I think nowadays music is probably one of the easiest means to lose your moral sense. It is music is audio pornography today. That's what it is. It's explicit, it's shameless, it's vulgar, it takes your sense of humanity away from you. You know, the only simple response I have to that, if you have any regard for the Book of Allah, that you really think it's from Allah, iman. Even the name, the mention, the word of something, the word for something bad is terrible once you have faith. And the uh, Mufassirin said pertaining the ayah of Surah Luqman 2 that is approved that listening to music is not permissible and only musical instrument which may be used during certain occasions such as wedding and Eids is the duff or the duff. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu said in the sound hadith which is collected by Imam al-Bukhari that uh, there will be time سيأتي زمان على أمتي يستحلون الحرى والحرير والخمر والمعازف The time will come when some of my followers will treat as lawful and will be indulged in the following illegal activities and consider it okay. Adultery, wearing silk for men, drinking, and listening to musical instruments. And you say things that are in direct contradiction to the moral gauge Allah gifted us with, then obviously you're, you're, you're deviating from your natural fitrah, your predisposition to turn to Allah. And when you constantly you know, listen to garbage like that, then you get deviated. And you don't find pleasure except in disobedience to Allah. And that's a sign of a sick heart. So one has to distance themselves from this. Because what do the shayateen hate the most? Yes, they hate the Qur'an. They hate the word of Allah. They, they flee, it hurts them. So you know what they do? They, because this person has let the shayateen, the devils into his heart, they start pinching at his heart when he hears Qur'an. And he says, ah, I don't want to hear this. Right? It's like, surge, it's like pulling a tooth for this person. This happens. When you try to give this person a reminder from Allah's word, they get annoyed by it, like agitated, like an allergic reaction. Why? Because they've let the shayateen in. To let them out, the first thing you got to do is stop supplying them with fuel. This is fuel. For that, they want to sing the songs that are not hidden in their songs. In your cars, there is music. If you have stuck and died, then what do you think of Allah? What kind of death will come? Every time you listen to the Quran, Allah has given you the eyes of everything. But this will be for them, who will be here to make music on their songs. If you put it on the songs of the songs, then Allah is going to listen to your songs. Then he says, وَالْمَعَازِفَ Ma'azif meaning, musical instruments will be considered permissible. Did you hear this? وَالْمَعَازِفَ This hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari. 
Why would that be the case if musical instruments were permissible? People say, no, what, about, what if it's light, soothing, classical music? How can you replace the Qur'an with something of that nature? Does the Qur'an not soothe you? If the Qur'an does not soothe you, remember nothing ever will soothe you. My brothers and sisters, is this not a time? If Ibrahim alayhi salam became a friend of Allah when he was prepared to sacrifice his own child, can we not become friends of Allah by, prepare, by sacrificing even the music discs we have, throwing them out of our motor vehicles? We might die in a condition where had we not thrown those CDs out, perhaps we may have had music blasting with Beyonce and Rihanna whilst we died. It can happen. I'd rather have the Quran play. Wallahi, you never know when you're going to die. ऐसे रब के हम गुनागार हो गए ऐसे रब के ना फरमान हो गए जिसने देखा नजरें आवारा हो गईं फिर भी चमकने का हुक्म देता रहा जिसने देखा कान गाने सुनने के आदि हो गए वो फिर भी सुनने का कानों को हुक्म देता रहा उसने देखा महफिल मौसी की है उसने जमीन को फिर नहीं दिया हाय हाय म्यूजिक इज कंप्लीटली फॉरबिडन इन इस्लाम व्हेदर यू लाइक इट और नॉट दिस इज द कंसेंसस ऑफ स्कॉलर्स ऑफ इस्लाम the four schools of thought they all make music forbidden agar ye jahan agar ye jahan jaza saza ka hota usi waqt zameen phat jati gaane wale bhi dhaste sunne wale bhi dhaste ye band baje wale bhi dhaste aur ye sound wale bhi usi mein dhaste aur ye zameen barabar ho jati par mera allah hai jo kehta acha koi nahi mera banda kal to toba kar le hum intezar mein hai i have been at a scene of an accident where the car was a right off but the music was blasting four youngsters were crushed to death i don't know how that music was still playing yet the car was written off totally and i was at the site of that particular accident and we started weeping and crying why because i said to myself if only the ummah could see this wallahi they would realize and understand substitute all this with the quran how blessed would the entire scene have been and how changed it would have been if the same scenario had quran playing allahu akbar may allah make us strong today we cannot sacrifice one cd of a naked person on the globe and we talk about qurbani and eid al adha and udhiya and sacrifice of ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam we don't even deserve a droplet of that why we not ready to sacrifice anything for the pleasure of allah nothing اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فدلاهما بغرور الله عز وجل is describing what how shaitan got our parents adam and hawa salam alayhima to make the mistake that they made what was his strategy to get them to listen to him not just what he said to them we all know that he whispered to them we all know that he offered them eternity and that they could stay in jannah we know that but how did he do it what method did he use that method is important to understand and it's captured in the first expression of the ayah fadalla huma bi ghurur like literally shaitan didn't go out and say disobey allah he offered it a little bit just a small little bit of compromise and they listened and then he offered just a little bit more it's harmless what i'm saying isn't haram i'm just saying just don't take it a little bit easy you know and then you don't have to eat from this tree in the case of our parents you don't have to eat from i'm not saying you should eat from the tree I'm just saying at least check it out it's a, it's a beautiful tree there's no harm looking at it is there and it's not at one time dalla also suggests that these suggestions came a day then another day then another day then another day like this was a process for this guy it wasn't like they did he whispered to adam alayhi salam and immediately he went and ate from the tree there's actually an entire strategic little by little by little winning over the argument that he's doing fadalla huma bi ghurur and that's what he does to us to this day this is the reason it's mentioned in the quran that he drew them out with de- using this and the bi ghurur i didn't translate using deception this is a kind of deception in other words there are things that are clearly wrong you and i know that there are cl- there are things that are clearly clearly wrong but there are a lot of small not as clearly wrong steps that are there that you should have the sense to know if i take this one tiny step tomorrow i'll be taking another tiny step and then another and then another and before i know it i'll end up in the wrong So you have to put protective measures in place. So if anyone here or elsewhere claims to be a, a, a follower or a blind follower of any madhab and you wind up getting the information from your madhab then go on against it then know my brother and sister in Islam that you follow your desires not an imam. Not an imam. 
Because if you're following the Imam, then you would follow him on this issue as well. Imam Hanifa, he had the strictest madhab. His madhab, madhab was so strict concerning musical instruments. Listen to this. He detested singing and he considered it sinful. They would, they would reject the person's testimony. In other words, like my Shaykh said it before, if you know, they were just sitting in a gathering and someone came and said, listen man, I just saw you know, this crime take, outside, you know, take place outside. Say, so get out of here man. You listen to music all the time? You're gonna come here and bear testimony? Your testimony will not be accepted. According to the Ahnaf, if someone came and said, I saw this, any crime, and he, among, he was among those who listened to music, his testimony will be rejected. Wow. Listen to more. They also said music, Ibn Han, Abu Hanifa rahimahullah said, music is haram according to all religions. Rahimahullah. He even went back to Judaism, Christianity. He said, in all religions, music was forbidden. <coughs> he further said, listening to music is fisk, defiant, disobedient, and enjoying it is disbelief, kufr. He said, if you, if you listen to music and you're having a good old time, you know, bumping your head, he said, you're disbelieving in Allah at the time of listening to music because you are, you are enjoying something totally forbidden instead of feeling guilty, remorseful, and otherwise. This was the strictest madhab. We're not saying that everyone who listened to music and enjoyed it is a kafir. I'm telling you what the Imam said. Rahimullah, he had his views, he had his point. The situation back then was different. So we're not saying that everyone who listens to music is a kafir. Don't misunderstand me. But that's what the Imam said. Rahimullah, and we said that this, that this was the strictest madhab among the rest. Imam Malik, he was asked, ما عما يترخص به فيه أهل المدينة في الغناء فقال إنما يفعله عندنا الفساء. He was asked, what do people of Medina, because he was the Imam of uh, Darul Hijra, he was the Imam of Medina. He was asked, what is it that you guys have, what concession do you have concerning singing? He said, he said in another narration, he said, Billah. He said, we see refuge with Allah. None does this here except the corrupt people. No one gets involved in music and singing except the corrupt people among the society. This was the position of Imam Malik. Furthermore, when somebody asked him about singing, he said, فماذا, ماذا بعد الحق إلا الضلال أهو حق He said Allah says in the Quran What is after the truth except deviance I ask you is singing the truth What is the truth The Quran What is after the truth except deviance This was the fiqh of Imam Malik Rahimahullah ta'ala Imam Shafi'i In his book Adab al-Qada He said about the one who partakes in song To be an incompetent fool Someone who's foolish he is an incompetent fool or idiot whose testimony is to be rejected. Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah ta'ala, his son Abdullah, who was another imam, followed his father's footsteps in righteousness and knowledge. He asked his father about music. He said, it does not surprise me that it cultivates hypocrisy in the heart. So I know that doing, you know, uh, drinking is wrong. But can I hang out with friends who drink? I mean, I'm not going to the bar or anything, but they sometimes they drink in my office. Can I just be with them? Just, you know, because, you know, they're my friends. Can I at least do that much? Is it absolutely haram for me to do that? And the scholar will say something like, you know, I advise you not to do it. It's not a good idea. It's bad company. But is it haram? Is it absolutely haram? And he says, well, I don't know if I could say it's abs. Okay, thanks. I got my answer. It's not absolutely haram, which means I could... I could do it. And that's how shaitan gets you to first hang out with them. Then they say, hey, we're going to the bar, you want to come along? Then you go to the bar and you're just having a coke or whatever and they're drinking their beer. And then eventually one late night, you know, it's a little bit of a, can you just slip some in? You know, somebody gave it to you or they slipped it into your drink and you didn't realize. And you're like, well, I didn't intend to do it. And it's just one thing after another, after another, after another. Subhanallah. This is Fadallahuma bighurur. This is the same surah in which Allah mentions the story of Barsisa, who went little by little by little into sin. You know, and this is not the occasion to tell you that story, but the point is the same. Shaitan will not come at you directly calling you to do the wrong thing. Shaitan will come at you to try to just compromise the or get on the road to the wrong. Then you only have yourself to blame. The, this is why Allah's commandment to Adam alayhi salam, the advice to Adam alayhi salam wasn't just don't eat from this tree. The advice was don't go near it. That's, it. There's a big difference between those two things, you know. And so you and I have to recognize there are some things that are clearly haram, but there's a road that leads to them. We have to watch out and not, be, not go on that track that shaitan's trying to reel us in. Repent unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every time you fall into the sin of listening, listening to the music, 
repent frequently and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And nothing is impossible if you keep invoking Allah, oh Allah, make it easy for me to distance myself from that and to hate listening to that, Allah definitely will help you. And I pray for you and for myself and all the Muslim brothers and sisters, the Muslim Ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to fulfill what He ordained upon us and distance us from whatever He prohibited. Amen.